Today, Russia helped the Syrian regime launch a, quote, wide-scale offensive on rebel-held areas in western Syria, called one of their biggest yet. Missiles fired from land and sea, bombs raining down from the sky. I do want to warn you first, what you are about to see is extraordinarily graphic. It is what is left behind when the smoke clears. Arwa Damon reports on the reality of the front lines. Barely able to see through the thick dust. Somehow, members of the Syrian civil defense team, also known as the White Helmets, pull out a little girl. Grab her, one orders, and turns around. Miraculously, the children appear unharmed. But then, another strike. Frantic cries of God is great. Luckily, this time it seems, everyone got out. But often not. The White Helmets, an independent medical rescue team, have been through this before, too many times for most to count. But now, it's not just Assad's warplanes and barrel bombs. Since Russia's bombing campaign began on September 30th, they say they have documented around 182 civilian deaths, including two of their own, which they say were caused by Russian strikes. The Kremlin boasts of its accuracy, insisting civilians are not being targeted or killed. But those on the ground say it's a lie. The strikes are indiscriminate and often land on areas far from the front lines or rebel bases. A child here treated for wounds. Two others appear shell-shocked. Childhoods they will never know. We cannot independently verify the activist claims of Russian responsibility for these casualties. But perhaps what is most despicable is that it is happening at all and has been happening for too long, no matter whom to blame. As the Russian, Syrian regime, Americans, NATO, and other key players talk of war maneuvers and strategic gains, this is what that rhetoric looks like on the ground. These images are graphic and they are real. A child covered in blood, screaming in pain, crying out for his mother. <laughs>